It's a head-to-head mock draft. We're picking at number nine, and I will be starting with Jason Tatum. Let's see how it goes. Michael Bolton? Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy, your daily NBA fantasy podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I get knocked down, but I get up again. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble, on TikTok at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Fangel. Start the season with a big return on Fangel. Place your first $5 bet and get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Go to Fangel.com. To get started, thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free, and we are available on all platforms. So give us a thumb and a double bang and a comment. Good stuff. We are Operation 100K. We also want to hit just 75K subs first, so let's get to that one. I appreciate everyone being here. Hit the thumbs on the video and like and follow. And we're we're rolling through today with pick nine in a head-to-head mock draft. I will be doing a Yahoo Points mock draft today as well. And I will be doing a Do Not Draft show today as well. Maybe something else. Maybe. Um, there will be another auction draft next week. Maybe get an auction mock in this week also. We'll see. Um, and that's where we're at. With sort of the content coming today and what's coming over the week, there will be the 240 game rotation predic- prediction shows. There'll be season win total over under shows. There'll be some more upside, deeper sleeper things. And just a revision of the final look at undervalued um, players and overvalued players by ADP. That'll all come at some point this week as well. Um, so yeah, I don't know what more to say about that. We're going to get into this draft in a second. Like I said, I'm picking at number nine and I will start with Jason Tatum. But today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Start the season big with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. You could be in there. You're watching games. You're watching the NFL here on, on a Sunday and you see something interesting, a development, a twist. And you open up the app, you open up FanDuel, you open up the page where those bets can be placed. And in that same spot, all the stats are just available right there too. All of the um, play-by-play is there as well. So you can match your eyes with the numbers that you're seeing. And you can go, oh, here you go. It's all here. I don't have to worry about scrolling through to a million different tabs and phones and options and apps and whatever. It's all straight there on the FanDuel app. And if you are a new customer, place a $5 bet and then guaranteed you get $200 in bonus bets back. Easy. So head across to FanDuel.com. Check out all the odds for the NFL college football, NHL, the championship series in Major League Baseball, and of course, the return of NBA season. And don't forget to gamble responsibly. All right, we're getting ready here for this mock draft. Uh, Remember, I am going down this list in this order of picks based on ADP. I'm not sure that I would take Tatum at nine. I might, I might not, but I am taking him here in this one. Um, He's an interesting player who probably doesn't hit this mark or close to this mark on a per game basis. Uh, people do value the stability of him being available. And like I will continue to say, he hasn't been hurt yet. I don't like to pick guys on the basis that they're guaranteed to not get hurt because that is not a guarantee. He may get hurt. He might not. It might be totally fine, but there's no guarantee. And if that's your number one reason, I always find that logic a little iffy. We're going to talk about this Tatum team. I probably, I think at this spot, he looks to be, we'll look at a punt assists Sort of a setup, but you also don't have to. He's not a bad assist player. He's fine at assists. His field goal percentage has been iffy at times. He's not a big shot blocker. You can go in many different directions with him. Um, And he's sort of just just sort of across the board. Solid. Really good points. And then across the board, some above average rebounds as well. So he, he sort of moves towards being a big, but he doesn't have the blocks and field goal percentage of a big. And that's sometimes where it can be a little bit more challenging to make sure that your team looks the right way. Um, at the end, but remember, when we don't try to win a projected standings. That doesn't help us. We have to understand scarcity, variability, upside hits, all that sort of stuff, and, and that is obviously hard to price in. So let's get into this mock. Let's get it started, and let's see where we're at. All right, let's head into this draft room now. We are a couple of seconds away from it beginning, four seconds, in fact. Um, a Markham, number one. We've got a couple of fantasy analysts in here. Alex Barutha from Rotowire is in here. Uh, Raf Johnson from Roto World is in here. Alex is at three. Raf is at five. I'm at nine. Like we said, Wimby goes one. 
So the big fella here, Scotty Barnes for MVP, takes Jokic at two. Really doesn't believe in the Scotty Barnes for MVP narrative. Otherwise, he would have taken Scotty Barnes. Hey, there you go. Already, already a proven Canadian fraud in there at that pick. So Doncic goes at three to Barutha. And now Extreme 23 takes Shea at four. That is the absolute stock standard top four, which has a small chance of being the top four at the end of the season. And that's honestly just how these drafts work. Raf, Raf, don't tell me I have to call you out for not being in the room. I thought I saw you in here before. Come on, Raf. Come on, Raf. Let's make the pick, Raf. Otherwise, I'm pausing it and talking to him. Raf, hello there. Raphael J. All right, we are just going to pause that, undo the last pick, and figure out what just happened. Raf is here. Let's unpause and get get going. All right, let's go. Uh, Raf, you are back on the clock. Not that he can hear me talking, but here he goes. He takes Davis at five. Totally reasonable. So let's see what Tiagom eight does at this selection. Takes Giannis. That is, again, a very stock standard top six. And this is where things get interesting. This is where Embiid comes into play, and I would not take him there. Also, remember, Embiid is not playing at all in this preseason, which is, I won't say sus, but it, it does validate my decision to not take him in round one. And someone on Twitter put out an interesting point. It said, if you're not willing to take Embiid in round one because you're worried, why don't you give him the same Kawhi treatment where you're not interested in taking him inside the top 50? And you know what? That's also fair. That is also fair. If I'm not willing to take Embiid, who's a top one or two player, and Kawhi, who's maybe a top seven player, but I'm not interested in taking them because of injuries, why do I give Embiid the latitude of taking him in round two, and I wouldn't take Kawhi until four or five? And, and you know, I'll, uh, that he sort of just tweeted that to me before we started this draft, and I have to sort of think about why I'm a little bit more um, forgiving, I guess, of Embiid. But it is, I, I think it's, it's a discussion that's worth having. It's a thought that's worth having anyway, as to why... That I, and I think many others, given the fact of where Embiid sits in the ADP and in the ranks versus where Kawhi sits, that everyone is more than willing to give Embiid that pass, or, or a small pass, but nowhere near the same level of pass. Oh, yeah, Kawhi gets dinged a lot more. After I took Tatum, it went Trey Young, Anthony Edwards, Curry, Harden, and Ball. And now we are one pick away from mine. Like I said, I'm probably going to be looking at punting an assist situation here. But it does make it interesting as to who's available in this spot. Uh, I'll just take... I'm going to take Towns here, I think. I'll take Carl Towns at this spot, pick 16. I'll punt assists. I could have taken uh, any number of other players at this spot, but I'm going to take Towns there. I'm going to load up on some bigs. Now, I need do need to... Now, the good thing about these guys, if I'm punting assists, they hit threes as well, which is something that you can lose out on. They're both good at free throws, which is also something you can lose out on when you deal with punting assists. Not that they're super low on turnovers, but compared to the other players around them, they are. Uh, so after Towns goes Booker. Well, Sabonis went before, then it went Towns, then it went Booker, then it went Mitchell. So there are a lot of guards in this area. The other player I could have gone there is, is a Paul George in that position. Um... Yeah, I, again, people would suggest that that is high. I think Paul George can easily be a top 20 player. Could have taken Scotty Barnes, but that is also another one who's, who is a, a high assist player, and I'm not avoiding assists, but I want to build up some of the other categories. So I want to make sure I got some of those rebounds in from Towns. Um, you know, he chips in a little bit with blocks as well, and then we'll get some of that other stuff coming probably in round three, I would guess. So... What's someone laughing at here? I don't really have no idea. Um, Booker, Don Mitchell, Jalen Brunson, Scott Barnes, De'Aaron Fox, and Kevin Durant. I have no idea what he... Someone said Lemafau. What What happened? I honestly have no idea. After Fox goes Durant, then Lillard at 23. Um, and then the last pick of the second round is the Wemby team. We'll see what he does here. There's many options, and we all love round three. There's so many different players who fit in this zone. A home ground to pair with Wemby. All right, so that guy is going to win blocks. That is basically locked down now at this point. That he will win blocks. Like That's very hard for anybody else to compete there, but we're also not playing a Roto League. So if he wins blocks, that's fine, but you can still beat most of the other teams. After Chet goes LeBron, and then Kyrie. Okay. Hard to feel anything like... Um, super positive or super negative about those players in those positions. Let's see what Extreme does. So after Irving went, 
Shingun to Brutus. So he went Doncic, Durant, and Shingun. So he's obviously got rebounder and assist players together, which is Doncic and Shingun. Morant goes next. Let's see what Raf does after he took Scott Barnes in round two. Still don't really see what was funny about Scotty Barnes getting picked. No idea. Paul George is who Raf took, which, yeah, I like it. I like the Paul George pick. Now, what am I going to... How am I going to approach my pick here? I, I like an Evan Mobley selection for me, which is probably what I'll do. Mobley, again, one of those players that people just have some very, very wild um, opinions on. I like him. I think he's good. Uh, Jaron could be a play for me. Jalen Johnson maybe on the flip back. So after Paul George goes Cade, then goes Bam at 31. Well, I haven't really seen Bam being going as high as 31 in a while. Also, Fred Van Vliet is still available. Zion goes there. Also, I haven't seen Zion go that high. Now, I have the decision here. Do I Look, I think there's value in, in Fred Van Vliet falling down to this spot. Does it make sense in my build? And again, I use the term build very lightly because I, I think we, we do, as a, as a general rule, hyper-focus on this idea of build and players. But because I, I did tell you I'm going with this strategy, which is not what I would do in a regular sort of situation, I would not be as inflexible as that. I will take Mobley there. I almost definitely in other spots would have taken Fred Van Vliet, but in order to try and play out this build, this pairing, um, I'll, I'll take Mobley in that position. So Van Vliet goes next, but also... I don't think it's a wrong decision either way. Also, remember, the differences between players at 30, 35, 40, it's so small, man. And the further we get down, most of them make, most picks will make a little bit of sense. Some, there'll be some standout that don't make really any, but there'll be most of them that make sense. After Mobley goes Van Vliet, and then at 35, it is the Bronco, Jalen Williams, and now we're heading to 36. So I'm getting to this spot now where my points probably need some viewing. I need to pay some attention there. Is that Jim Butler? Does Larry Markkinen get back to me? So after Jalen Williams went Tyrus, Maxi, Jaron Jackson. So Larry will be a play for me for sure. DeJounte Murray is a really good pick there at 38. And uh, <clears throat> Jalen Johnson and Larry Markkinen, my two guys. Well, there goes Jalen, so I didn't get him. I might... As much as I have some worries with Markkinen and maybe missing games in March and April, almost definitely, I will take Lowry here at pick 40 and just really sort of stacking bigs here. Really stacking bigs. I do need to make sure, but again, those bigs, apart from Mobley, they all hit threes, so that's helpful. Tatum's not really a big, but he plays a little bit like a big. Very happy with both of my percentages. My steals will need some work and we'll figure out that later, but I still need to work on scoring somewhat as well. After Markkinen goes Paolo Banquero at 41. We, we know the drill. We, we know the story with Paolo. That's okay. We can do that. And this is... A, do I, would I take... If he gets back to me, I would take Kawhi in the next round. I don't think he will, but I will. I would I would take him there. And you know, I could have even taken him there instead of Larry. After Banquero goes Desmond Bain. And then we are starting to get into the big man territory. I've taken a lot of bigs. So we're going to have a run here of Jarrett Allen, Rudy Gobert, Nick Claxton, um, DeAndre Ayton, Jalen Duran, Siakam, if you count him as a big Miles Turner. All these guys are going to go in the next seven, eight picks. But I grabbed them early. I grabbed some bigs early. And I'm not going to have to be susceptible to that. So I could look at a scorer if I wanted to do that. I could look at someone to get me some threes. I could look at someone, you know, and I've got super strong free throws. I could look at a, a big man who gets me blocks. And I don't have to worry too much about the free throws. And I can boost my field goals there as well. And then on the flip back around, I get a scorer who might hurt my field goals. But we'll see whether those blocks actually make it back to me. Jamal Murray at 43 is fine. Miles Turner at 44 is, is cool too. And Jimmy Butler here is all right. But look, any of those three players that just went, Murray, Turner, Butler, and even Kawhi, obviously, have significant ability to be better than this. Some of them I don't think will. A lot of them do have that ability to be better than that. So Barutha takes Kawhi, um, which again, this we're sitting at 48, and that brings us back to that earlier discussion about Embiid and Kawhi. And like I've said, 50 for Kawhi, you're taking him here at 46. It's, it's not that different. It's really not that different. Quickly goes at 47. Ah, Scotty Barnes for MVP. He's loading up on assists. He's got a million assists, as you can see that. And then Derek White finishes it off at number 48. Reasonable pick. 
obviously when you take White and then you've taken Chet and Wemby, this team is going to be punting points. That is almost, not quite, but almost impossible to be able to be competitive in points with that sort of a start, I think. He goes another Celtic with Jalen Brown, and that does help the points, but some, he's taking a lot of the low scorers in those first few rounds. And that's, again, that is reasonable. That is totally a fine way to play this. Okay. Um, so Siakam, then Franz Wagner. Reasonable. We know what sort of Wagner is, don't we? Like, has he got top 25 upside? I, I don't think so, but I don't know that he falls from much from here. And then DeRozan goes to extreme at 52. And Raf is on the clock next. So how does Raf approach this? He's got some good blocks with uh, Davis and Turner. He doesn't really have much in the way of assists, even though Barnes will get you some. Will he load up on a Jarrett Allen type? Will he take a guard? Or will he take like a Mikhail Bridges? Who's another option for him? I probably wouldn't be for me, but he is an option for him. Oh, he goes with blocks again. So he's trying to sort of get into the Wemby guy and yeah, be competitive there. He's still a, a, a distance behind it, but he's... Like, if I look at my projections, I've got the Wemby team at 1.9 blocks per game and Rast team at 1.5. He's getting there. And here we talk about the centers. We saw Turner go. Now it's Gobert. And then Allen went. Um, Claxton will be someone that I will look at with my pick. I can absorb the free throws. Jalen Duren would be another one, but he obviously doesn't block shots. DeAndre Ayton, we just sort of don't know what he's going to bring. Um, it's a little early for a Walker Kessler. What's my pick? Um, I think we just take Claxton there. And now I, in my next pick, I need guards. That's where we need to start looking at guards. And there are going to be guards here. It's the Jordan Pools, Cam Thomas, Levine, Sexton, Beal. Um, who else is around here? Russell, Reeves, Bridges, Brandon Miller. Has he got guard eligibility? No, he doesn't. It's only forward eligibility. Um, Toby Harris is a forward as well, but he, he can go in this period. Um, Josh Giddy, even though he randomly doesn't have point guard eligibility. Zach Levine was great yesterday, by the way, in the preseason game. That doesn't mean that he's always going to be great, but he has a real shot at being an undervalued player here. So after Levine goes Vooch and then Toby Harris and then Jalen Duran. That's I think that's really good value for Toby. Um, yeah, I really like that pick. Duran slid a little bit here as well, which I, I do have worries and have some concerns about role and I've said all of this stuff. Miles Bridges before Macau Bridges is something I'm seeing happening in a few different spots, which I didn't really think that I would see. Now it's my pick. Who is the guard that I take? I am going to... Oh, I was going to take Cam Thomas. Okay. I think I just might take Beal here. Get some scoring in there. Get some threes. Be efficient. Cam Thomas would have been a very nice boost to my points. But obviously, he went one pick before. I considered Jordan Poole, but I didn't want to go that direction in this one. So I'm just looking at my team. My free throws do need a little bit of work. And I've got a couple of guards I need to draft. So that will be something I can target then. Mikhail Bridges goes at 65, DeAndre Ayton at 66. Remember, I am not paying attention to my assists. My assists are going to be bad, but they don't need to be the worst. They can be, but they don't need to be. I think currently they might be projected to be... No, not the worst. Um, Raf's assists are projected to be the worst. Ayton, then Brandon Miller at 67. Ayton at 66 looks pretty good value, I would say. What does Raf do here? Hartenstein, another guy that's probably needing, needing to go off the board soon. I am interested in grabbing a... Well, Brandon Ingram goes... Or Giddy, then Brandon Ingram. I am interested in grabbing a Mark Williams. Do I do that in round seven? Or, or maybe I'll look at that in round eight. And Jordan Poole is sliding somewhat here as well. I'm going to be also interested here. I might put... I don't know, be on my list. I want to see how people handle Devin Vassell. Because this is about the area for Vassell, I think, from a per-game non-injured status. And in a lot of these mocks, Vassell has been going at about that spot without seeming to take into consideration that he's out for the first few weeks of the season and then might be limited for a little bit of time after that, which is interesting. I didn't. I thought people would knock him way down. We'll see how this draft treats it. So Reeves and Russell go back to back to finish round six at 71 and 72. I don't really have any strong opinions either way on that. I think, oh, actually, it's not true. I think it's just fine. I think it's the right spot for both of those guys. Colin Sexton again cooked yesterday. I don't think there's any risk of him not being a starter in Utah. The risk is going to be trade and uh, March. 
April. That's it. Jordan Poole goes at 73, which is solid enough. Like it. Um, I think Simons needs to be in, in my mix here for these next couple of picks. So I've got Ananobi. I've got Mark Williams and Colin Sexton. I am very doubtful that I'll get all of those players. I do need to get some more scoring in the... Ooh, that is... Okay, Walker Kessler there is very interesting. I think Kessler is establishing himself as not a 23-minute player, like a minimum 26-minute player now, which obviously boosts his value. That is the vibe that I'm getting out of Utah at the moment. So I have bumped him up. Not quite that high, but I have bumped him up. And we that does put him in that Zubats, Williams, Hartenstein mix in terms of centers available in that area. I think Vassell went in that same sort of spot again. No one really discounting him from a from that injury perspective. I also think that it's going to be Julian Champagne that starts, not Steph Castle. After Kessler went, Kobe White, Devin Vassell, Drew Holiday, Kyle Kuzma. We're coming up to my pick now. Got my guys in the queue. Do I prioritize getting the scoring that I think I need? I probably do need to do that here. So I could get OG, but is it sign? Do I have more? Faith in Simons or Sexton? Hmm. Simons or Sexton? It's my pick. Nurkic goes... Oh, that's... Oh, didn't expect that. Nurkic before Mark Williams is interesting. Simons or Sexton? I know that... Oh, I'm going to take Simons here, actually. I've got a little bit more of a field goal percentage buffer to be able to take Simons, who's a worse shooter than Sexton. Um, also feel a, just a little bit more confident in what he brings. Mark Williams goes after that, which is frustrating. I was hoping that I could get him on the flip back. Maybe Ananobi and Sexton for me are the guys that we look at coming around the next corner. I do need to make sure I'm getting some steals. That's why OG and Suggs are going to be really important for me in these and Herb even in these next couple of rounds. John Kaminga at 83. I swear to God, every mock I'm doing, Kaminga goes at 83 or 84 or 85. Like every single one is in that. Like three, I've never seen a player at this point of the draft go in such a tight window. Zubats at 84 is is good, and I am feeling some level of confidence that OG will make it back around to me, which does obviously help my steals it's quite a lot. Uh, CJ McCullum is going to start while Trey Murphy is out at least, and maybe even longer. He's at 85 here, and I, I do not like the idea of CJ in the 60s, but 80s, 90s, I, I'm fine with it, especially if they are literally going to go this centerless scenario. BZ or BZ, Money Sniper. He took Kaminga last time round. He takes Brook Lopez here. So now I'm just waiting to see what TJ does. OG is going to be my option. So he takes Jakob Pertl. All right, so we are at pick 88. I want to get some steals in here. And OG is guard eligible. So we'll bang that in there. And like Sexton would have worked as well in this spot. He's just not as high of a steals guy. I wanted to prioritize getting the steals. I don't think Sexton's going to... Oh, that is early for Scoot, man. And I think I might have even taken Scoot in round nine of a draft. I think round eight is a little early. And I, would I prefer Keontae over Scoot? I don't know. Scoot looked really bad in that first preseason game. It is preseason, but it was a lot of the same problems of why can't this guy finish. That's a concern. Not going to rule anything out or, or make any rash judgments based on preseason, but it's a little worrying. So after Scoot goes Jabari Smith, who feels like the perfect player for here, who's almost got no ability, I don't think, to jump ahead of this. But of course he might. I'm also going to throw Dan Gafford into my queue. I feel like he's edged a little bit closer to an equal minute split with Lively. Um, the other names to really watch here is what happens... Oh, well, Gafford just went. What happens with Amen Thompson? Um, how early are people going to go on him? Because obviously the people are going really early on him at the moment. Who else is in my list? I want to put Keontae there. Because so I think, yeah, you might be able to get Keontae two rounds later than Scoot. And I think I think he might look pretty good. And I don't actually... I, I know he's a point guard. I'm not sure he's going to be a super high assist player anyway. Not that that's the purpose of punting assists. So after Gafford goes Keegan Murray, who had five steals in a game two days ago. And that was Raft that took him. Poop Cookie Michael Porter goes 93. These are all reasonable spots for these players, and we'll see what Barutha does here at um, 94. He takes Chris Middleton, which is solid as well. Yeah, he might miss time. He probably will. But I think you're eliminating so much risk at that spot, and we hope that he's not just a 25-minute-a-night player. All right. What is old mate Scott Barnes going to do here? Is he going to go RJ Barrett? 
which I wouldn't mind here if he wasn't injured. Wow, that, I have not seen Tyus Jones go that early. But if you are looking for assists, and maybe Scott Barnes is, let's have a look at his team. He's sort of middle middle to upper pack assists, so he's looking to lock that down. That's reasonable. I worry that Jones just hurts a lot in some other spots. But that's what we're at at this point, isn't it? Like, Amarkham just took Caruso there, so we know that Caruso might not get double digits in scoring, but he might get two steals and a block. So you're taking... Um, you're you're risking. Oh, he gets I mean, sex and lasting to that is really unbelievably good. Like the fact that he wet, fell all the way through these picks. Like I would have taken sex and ahead of like I debated ahead of OG. Obviously, I debated him ahead of Simons. I would have taken him ahead of Smith. I would have taken him ahead of Keegan Porter Middleton Jones. Yeah, and then Rogier goes next at ninety eight. So it's a little bit of a value pocket here, I think. Uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich should be someone oh there goes Valanciunas Bogdan Bogdanovich should be someone we look at here Jalen Green as much as you might have some distaste for his fantasy game his scoring is really important around this area hitting some threes as well um, he he makes sense Herb Jones to boost some of your defensive numbers and my steals aren't super strong and we'll see I, well, Trey Murphy at 100 is interesting there Oscar a man's going to go and there goes Raf taking a man at 101 that was what we wanted to see do I look Keontae Jalen Green are two of my options here. How, how are my guards looking? I've got Simons, Beal, and Ananobi who are guard eligible. I probably need one more guard eligible player. And all my guys in the... Well, there goes Herb. I didn't get him. Rowan Barrett at 102. Herb Jones, 103. So Riley's up next. Just debating what I'm going to do. Oh, Jalen Suggs is another option. Can I take on his low scoring? I don't. I don't think I can just yet. I don't think I can just yet. Now, I do have Markin. Do I want a third Utah? Well, I can't take Suggs anyway because he just went. Do I want another a second Utah player? Do I take Jalen Green or Bogdan Bogdanovich there? Bogdan makes a bit of sense. I won't say he's got the exact score. You know what? I'm taking Jalen Green there. I just want to really get that significant boost in points because there's just not many of these guys left. I think I'll be able to get one of Keontae or Bogdan on the way back around. Whether I do that or not, or I go a different direction. Also, Puzingas is definitely in this mix of picks coming up. So after Jalen Green goes Draymond Green. Um, wanted to secure those points, which I think I have with that pick. I probably... Ooh, Alex Sarah, 107. I like it. I like it. This is... Um, Dyson Daniels is also a target of mine because I want to make sure I'm getting some steals. So there goes Bogdanovich. I didn't get him. So it went Draymond Green, Alex Sarr, and Bogdanovich, and that finishes off round 12. Got three more picks until it's back to me. I've got three guys in the queue. Like, Puzingas will make sense here. He will actually make a ton of sense for me in my team, and I know he's injured. And I know I don't like taking injured players, but we are outside the top 100. Malik, oh, wow, I haven't seen Monk go that early, I don't think. Kongwu 109, Monk 110. So I'm going to have my choice of these players. Keontae and Puzingas are the two that I'm really debating in this spot. I think it's got to be KP. Don't want to do it in the 100. Ooh, Marcus Smart at 11. So, ooh, that's okay. Let's take Puzingas there. Let's take KP. And, you know, I feel like I'm in a relatively strong spot where I can deal with that and miss him for the first two months of the season, whatever. And that, that spot, it's value enough. Uh, Pajemski, 113. Chris Paul, 114. Obviously, again, the eight, this is how we have to be really cautious in, in um, preseason. The eight to 10 threes a game is complete garbage. It was never going to happen. It has not come close to happening. It just is insane to have thought that he could, for him to think that he could do that. It is just never going to happen. Pajemski, Chris Paul, Keontae George. So there goes George out of my list. So I do like the idea of Dyson Daniels. Also, I think it's really, really, it, yeah. I try not to, and I, I'm probably guilty of this, but I try not to have significant definitive statements at this time of year. I can give an opinion. I can say, I think this will happen. This is why I think it'll happen, blah, blah, blah. But be really cautious about it. That's a terrible pick. You got to take this guy over this guy because it's all nuance. Someone had a comment and said, man, you are so crazy. You've lost it. You've dropped off because you, how can you possibly think that Scoot Henderson will have more usage than Denny Avdia? Well, again, maybe, maybe Denny does have more usage than Scoot. 
Scoot was 27 usage last season. Denny was 19.5. So it would take a big, big change in both of their games to expect that Denny has a higher usage than Scoot Henderson this season. But it could happen. I can't rule it out. I wouldn't say it's crazy to think that Denny, that, that Scoot's going to be more than Denny because, you know, it would seem like the absolute most likely outcome. And that's what I try to do with most of this stuff. What is most likely? And then we switch from most likely to what is highest chance of being better. And then that's the adjustments that we make. After Keontae goes, Mike Conley, rock solid. Clay Thompson, eh, like fine. Dennis Schroeder, reasonable. He'll start. I don't know for how long. I don't love him there. Taylor Hendricks, we all like the appeal of Hendricks. I do too. It might not work out to that value, but that's okay. And then Capella and Nas Reed go to finish off round 10 and start round 11. And that is, I think, solid enough value for both of those players. Josh the Hitman Hart goes, followed by Denny Abdia to uh, Alex Brutha, and then Dante DiVincenzo at 124. These are some of these players who become favorites of guys like Abdia, like DiVincenzo, who, and even like a Hendricks. Um, these players who, their role, I'm not certain how locked in it is or how um, robust it is. And I think the absence of Sharp helps Denny, obviously, especially early on in the season. So we're getting closer to my pick. I better start making... Um, or you're locking in while Andrew Wiggins just went. Do I just take Dyson Daniels here? I do. I'm just going to take Dyson there. He probably doesn't hit this spot, but there's a chance that he goes higher. The fact that I wanted to get some steals in there was important to me. And then on the flip back around, I'm going to look at someone like a Jeremy Sohan. Um, Jaden Ivey is also going to be somewhat of a target. Oh, he just went, so he's not a target of mine anymore. So what am I going to do with my pick? Could I, could I take like an Al Horford? I mean, I could. Who's a shot blocker that's around? Not much, is there? So after Daniels, which is me, goes Ivy, Rissachet, or maybe, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, Edie had a really good game yesterday. I'm not super in on it, but he had a good game. Trey Saxon Davis at round 11. Cam Johnson at round 12 there to start off round 12. Um, Keon Alice at 134. Interesting defensive stat guy. I think I might take the flyer on Edie. Well, Buddy Heald goes. I, I might just... I think I'll take Zach Edie here just to see... Even if it's just early on in the season. I'm just debating. Like My other guys there are Sohan, who I think I can get later... I'll I'll just take Edie and we'll, and we'll see where that goes. We'll see where that goes. Just help to get me some of the the rebounds, field goals, steals, not steals, sorry, blocks. And even though my projections do not love Zach Edie, I think it's worth worth a crack at that spot. Aaron Gordon one thirty seven, Shaden Sharp one thirty eight. Um, Bob Porter should probably start to go. And as much as I don't love Portis as a fantasy option at those rank 100 spots in this area, I love it. Like, fine, go for it. I've got... I had so honey, my QE just went. So that's annoying. There goes Portis. So, Raph, that's a good pick from you at 140. Extreme. I think people are going to start to take Grayson Allen around this area. I'm surprised that Buddy Heald went before DeAnthony Melton, to be honest. Did this guy leave the mock extreme? My guy, come on. Come on. Yep. Sick. Oh, no, he's there. He's back. Lazarus moment. Al Horford at 141. Unbelievably good. I love that pick. And Barutha takes Jaime... Uh, yeah, Jaime Hakez. And you can tell, like, so, some of these guys, we sort of know the idea of what they like. And that's what Alex likes. Like, this Avdia... Huckers, Schroeder, like the upside's not really there, but the production's fine. They're going to give you good numbers, and that's totally cool as well. And Huckers is, again, I, I think overrated in circles, but if you are going to fade Jimmy Butler because of risk, then Huckers has to be bumped up. Understandable. I think Andre Drummond's going to go in this round. Um, Russell Westbrook at 143 is fine. I think Drummond's going to start to go. Drummond's an interesting one because, of course, if Embiid plays 33 minutes a night, Drummond is useless. But if Embiid plays 40 games, Drummond's amazing. I might actually take Drummond. Mm, don't know. 
Washington goes at 144. Clowney at 145. Nice little flyer pick there. So he's gone, a mark has gone sort of safe with most of the picks, but he takes the upside in Clowney, which is a good strategy to do that. You don't have to take upside with all your late picks. And my two last picks were Daniels and Edie, and they might not work out. So I'll probably go a little bit safer when we get back to this next selection, which I don't know. Is that is that Drummond? Maybe. This would be the area that I normally would have taken a Vince Williams, but of course he's hurt. Keyshawn George. Wow. Was not expecting Keyshawn George to go in round 13. He's been good. But yeah, that one I think might hit in March. He's been good though. He's been very good. Danny Melton goes to Raf and Ben Simmons went to Barutha at 147 for Simmons and 149 for Melton. Both of those could really, really pay off. I think, look, I, I might just pick Drummo with mine, understanding that, like, especially, look, even if like, Bead misses opening night, which I don't know if, whether he does or not, at least I'd have Drummond for opening night. So it's Grayson Allen. Let's see what Riley Gaines does. Oh, of course he takes Andre Drummond. Of course he does. So, how should we approach this now? Um, I'm not really sure what direction. I might take... You know what? I might take a Norman Powell here. I just want to give myself an early season boost in scoring. I don't love Powell in this spot. I don't love Powell as a general fantasy contributor, but just looking at the needs of my team and and what I wanted to add to it, I I think Powell gives me a a safety level in terms of scoring there. The other one I could have gone with is a Kelly Oubre in that position. So after Powell goes Carter, then John Isaac. And... Yeah, I'm not sure. Wendell Carter is an interesting one. I'm not really sure. Ron Holland goes at 13, which I hope that he gets enough minutes. I, I really, I think he can be very, very solid. I, I don't know if he will, but I hope he does. So I, what do I want to do in my next spot here? I'm just going to Khalil Ware. So he takes Ron Holland and Khalil Ware with his last two picks, triple double. So obviously hitting upside. We'll probably drop both, maybe drop one. Not sure. I... Vince Williams goes next. Um, it's my pick. I'm probably just going to take. Let's have a think about what I'm going to do here. I'm, I'm just going to. I'm just going to try. Did Bill I'll go? Oh, of course he did. He just went one pick before. Um, I'm going to take. I'm going to double down on the Clipper replacement guys and take Kevin Porter to go with Norm Powell. We'll see what happens, and then that can be moved on from. One or two of them after the first game, if necessary, if we see how it doesn't work out. But I'll try and cover both bases there. Again, Ubre could have been an option for me. I could have taken a... Um, well, I would have taken Bilal in that position. Um, not really interested in like a Don Klingon there. I could have taken a Bazalis as well. But there you go. After Kevin Porter goes Max Struess, then Tari Eason, then Steph Castle... Someone said I thought Kevin Porter was out of the league. I mean, he was last season. Um, Raf takes Reed Shepard. Again, not that's a, a, a stashy sort of thing. Not sure it's going to hit straight away. Extreme takes Lonzo Ball. Wow. Kelly Olenek goes to Barutha. This is a it's just a very differing opinion area of these drafts, isn't it? How much does a Linux play? He could play enough. Like, Karis Levert would be a good pick here as well. As a sixth man on that team, I do think Jalen Tyson will come for that role at some point, but probably not this year. Well, there goes Levert at 167. That's really good value. And the last pick was Matas Buzelis. All right. Overall, this draft, there wasn't anything massively outrageous that happened. I think it was all pretty solid. We all took good mixes, I think, of upside and safety picks in the last couple of rounds. Um, you know, the guys who didn't go that I thought would are Desumu and, and TJ McConnell. Um, probably a Jordan Clarkson I would expect to have gone. But otherwise, like sometimes Donovan Klingon goes, sometimes Keldon Johnson goes, sometimes Trey Mann goes. Otherwise, seems like seems pretty normal. Seems like a pretty pretty solid, pretty locked in mock draft. Seems pretty strong. All right. That, I believe, will end it. Not for our lives or anything, but for the mock draft. So 
I'll be back with a points league mock later on. I'll be back with the do not draft show later on, which of course take with a grain of salt, which I know not everybody does because they obviously hyper focus on certain things that get said. But we all know, I hope, what we mean when we say that. And I will again be at pains to explain what I mean when we do that show. Hit the thumb up on the YouTube side of it. Let's hit that 75k sub mark and we're done. Chap, thanks for being here. We're done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.